Hello and welcome back to my shop for another vlog entry on my Christmas Intarsia project. A lot's happened this week. Uh, at the end of last week, you know that I finished uh, cutting out all the pieces. I've been working with um, adjusting the pieces. Some of them didn't quite fit in their respective locations. I've been working on that. I've been working on uh, cutting some of the pieces down so that they can look more like they're in the background of the, uh, the uh, Intarsia project. Um, so let me show you a little bit of footage that I shot this week and kind of bring you up to speed with uh, where I'm at. Guys, it's Wednesday evening. I'm out here in the garage working on this Intarsia project. And I noticed a couple of things. One of the things that I noticed, I uh, had all the pieces laid out, is that uh, in the photo, when I pulled it out, there's a background. So I did a little measuring, and here's what I found. When I look at the semicircle in the background, and I just lay a ruler on here, it's 24 inches across and roughly eight and three quarter inches top to bottom. So what I'm gonna end up doing is swinging by my local wood store and seeing if I can come up with a nice piece of possibly eighth inch. I'd like to get as thin as possible for the background because I don't want it to stick too far out from the wall because it is, after all, gonna be sitting on the ledge of a, of a, of a door, uh, which is only probably three quarters of an inch if it's even that thick. The thing that I've been working on is I need to, and I talked about this in my previous video, make this piece, cut the back half off of it so it drops down below this piece. That way when I roll the snow around the snow over and then around the second piece, it seems to billow back and give it more of a three-dimensional appearance. The problem is I don't want to cut a sloppy line. I want to draw a nice straight line down to there. So I'm going to stop by my local Harbor Freight and pick up an inexpensive marking knife tomorrow so that I can better mark these pieces once I determine how deep I want to cut them off. In the meantime, what I think I'm going to do is tinker around with uh, pieces like this that don't quite fit and see if I can't trim them up a little bit with some files or even by nipping a little bit off with the scroll saw blade to get them to drop down into their uh, locations. The way I go about adjusting these pieces to fit is I essentially lay this piece where I want it to go and I look around the sides and you'll notice it's tight here and there's a couple spots over here where it's tight and I just basically scribble some marks on there. You can see those pencil marks there and there and the one right there and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use a couple of techniques. I have a Dremel tool and I have a little sanding disc for the Dremel tool and I might use that to kind of shave that down a little bit. Um, if, it's, if it's a decent thickness um, sometimes what you can do is lay these two pieces together and take your scroll saw and just recut that line which will cut the two pieces to fit and allow it to drop in. So one of those two methods is what I'll be using. I haven't determined that just yet, but I am going to work on this piece tonight and see if I can get it to drop into that position. Okay guys, here's all that I'm doing. I'm just taking my Dremel tool and I'm just lightly sanding, not putting much pressure, just, just letting it kind of rough the surface. Anywhere that I found there was a, uh, a rub trying to fit the piece. And then I'll just take the piece and I'll attempt to drop it right back into the slot. And as you can see, it's going much further down in the slot now. Looks like it's rubbing on this side, so I'm going to pull it back out, touch this side up with the Dremel tool until I get it to drop into its position. With just a little bit of trimming, you can see the piece fits beautifully uh, right in its respective spot. Uh, I'm going to go up here and work on this piece next and then just kind of clean a few others up. After just a few minutes of uh, work with the Dremel tool, you can see I've been able to fit this piece, this piece, and now the hand fits into um, the hat very nicely. It, it looks a little odd because of a shadow there uh, in the photo because this piece of wingy is uh, thicker than the piece of cherry, but I'll take care of that by uh, the wingy will actually curve down. The bill of the hat will, will curve, so you'll never see that. Uh, but that's all there is to it. Uh, the well, I did a little shopping. I wasn't able to find a marking tool, which was kind of a letdown, but I'll be able to figure that out. There's not a whole lot to be marked. I did find a nice piece of oak, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out in the half moon uh, and use it as the background for this intarsia. The thing I picked up and I'm really happy about, my sander, my spindle sander, came with 60 grit discs, or 60 grit spindles, and I found a set of 240 grit, the entire set, so these will be great. I can use the 60 grit for hogging out some of the heavier uh, areas, and then I can pop these uh, 240s on there to kind of clean things up. So I'm really getting excited. This is starting to come together. I was not able to find a reasonably priced marking gauge, but as you can see, I've got a nice straight line down that piece and this piece over here and a 
couple of other pieces that need to be uh, shortened. What I did is, you might remember when I was using my scroll saw, I had an old piece of paneling. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Um, I basically laid it on a table, laid these next to it, and just used that to trace the line. Um, 3 sixteenths isn't much, but I'm only want to take them down a little bit. I can always take them down more, and as I sand them, I can always take them down more. But uh, I've got these uh, marked. I'm going to... Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to cut them just yet, but my next step is to get these cut to the depth, get that excess cut off of them, and get them laid back in the puzzle. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the video, but I have gone and cut. See how the eraser is behind that piece? Then this piece here is dropped down. This piece is dropped down. Um, and there's another piece over to the right that's dropped down. Um, I used my table saw on the larger pieces, and on the smaller pieces like this one, I ran through my scroll saw. And I was able to drop them down. So now they appear to be, I really wish you could see that better on the video, but they appear to be setting behind the front pieces. So that's going to give me a nice flow with the snow flowing back and then flowing back again. It'll give a good three-dimensional effect. Uh, the next thing that I need to work on is the snowman's hat. And I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet. But if you take a look at this, notice how the brim of his hat, let me bring it a little closer to the camera. Uh, see how the brim of his hat appears to be at an angle? I'm going to have to cut some type of an angle on the back of that hat up there so that it looks like the hat is tipped back. Uh, I took the snowman's hat over to the spindle sander. Let me lift this camera up and I'll show you a little closer view here. I don't know how well you can see that, but I've actually got the hat now where it's shaped to where it looks like it's leaning back on his head. I'm real happy with the way that turned out. I hit it with the 60 grit wheel, uh, ground it down pretty darn good. Uh, I'll go back a little later when I clean all of this up and I'll use the 240 wheel. Um, but for now, I am extremely happy with the way uh, the intarsia piece is progressing. And um, I think uh, it's about time to call it a night and uh, we'll uh, wrap this up and I'll be back to see you guys uh, once again next week. So take care and thank you very much for joining me.